Hello, welcome to the Unexpected Podcast. I am not Tim, I am Matt, but I do want to welcome you to the world's best weekly SBG podcast with hosts spanning three continents. We, we, we have officially been announced as the best of those. Um, yeah. All right. By, so, by, by whom? Who did that? Oh, I just did that. Matt, Matt just five oh, okay. seconds ago. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so yeah, it counts. Yeah, so if another weekly SBG podcast comes out with hosts spanning three continents, then we might have a run for our money. But as it stands yeah. right now, we're the best. Good. Um, okay, so for today, uh, we are going to be going over a list by Alexander Sporl. Then we are actually going to be talking about a list that Mick had put together uh, for a tournament in the UK that he is now no longer able to attend. So we are hoping this is going to be the big inaugural um, or uh, uh, event of uh, you know kind of returning to tournament play amongst the hosts, but it's not because uh, mixed life happens. Um, yeah, mixed work has intervened. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. If it had been the previous weekend or the weekend after, it would have been fine. Um, yeah, well, yeah, oh well. Um, so, uh, and then we're going to talk about that. And then we're going to do a duel with Mick against Rainier um, w- to decide uh, for ourselves how well Mick would have done at this tournament had he been able to attend it. And had Rainier also attended. Had Rainier yeah. also attended. Rainier will be subbing in for everybody else at this tournament. Um, exactly. And I like we're both building a list for the tournament and neither of us are joining it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I was, I was, I was definitely closer to attending than you were. Yeah. Uh, well, by, well by Nick, why, don't you, why don't you tell us, I guess, before we get into the, the list episodes, why don't you tell us a little bit about this tournament just so we know that things are still oh, okay. happening? Well, so this, things are still happening. Um, so it's a tournament in London itself. Uh, it's, it's actually quite uh, uh, surprisingly rare to see London tournaments, even though it's the UK's largest city. Uh, a lot of the tournaments take, take place outside of London. But uh, this one, it was it was supposed to be called the Battle of Borodur. The reason for that is probably because Boro, which is the area uh, of central London where the Shard is, as in the big building with uh, with Sauron's eye at the uh, uh, at the top, it's uh, the, uh, the name was actually quite quite convenient for this for this reason. So it's six hundred points on the twenty seventh uh, on the twenty sixth of um, June. It's been sold out for ages with quite a large reserve list too. Uh, and it's four scenarios. Uh, I think they will be randomized at the start. There is a different scoring system um, than, than, than what you'd, you'd usually see in that depending on how big your victory has been, um, instead of let's say scoring points of like 12, eight, and then, or, or, or let's say like 12 nil and then Getting three points for a victory, one uh, uh, one tournament point for a draw, and zero for loss. Instead, in this one, you get your tournament points depending on how big of a victory you manage to accomplish. It's actually very similar to uh, the system which is which is currently quite popular in Germany, I believe, as well as Ireland. Um, so it would have been something new for me. I've never I've never actually played with the system. Um, yeah, the tournament is still going, still going ahead, but it looks like because of the latest. Um, government announcements, it may end up being split into like five mini tournaments where um, each uh, each of those five mini tournaments will only have like six six people because because of the rule of six, which exists in the country at the moment. So we'll see. It was going to be fun. I'm sure it's going to be fun for everybody else. I wish I could attend, but obviously there are certain things in life which cannot really be done otherwise so yeah hope everybody has fun all right well um sad you can't be there but glad things are starting to happen at least yeah definitely yeah there's actually there's 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 a couple of of a uh, couple more tournaments coming up in july and then in august and then Ardacon as well so everything's looking very very promising at the moment in the uk so we're just we're just hoping to see what happens all right. Um, so I guess one other announcement I wanted to make, and that's that uh, we uh, we may actually have some more Lord of the Rings movie content coming out. You know, the Amazon series is set to come out, I think, later this year or in 2022. I'm not sure. And also Lord, Lord of the Rings just got released in cinemas in the UK. 
Oh, did it really? Yeah. Oh, that'd mm. be fun to go see. Yeah, yeah. There was actually, I think, I think Kalman was actually posting on on Facebook the other day that he was he was going to see the Return of the King, and he he wanted to see where the film takes him and whether whether the little guy called Gollum was going to get the ring and and he's and he's rooting for him. I was going to so, say, so, don't spoil it for us. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to spoil it. So let's see. Yeah, hopefully... that's, that's the, the the underdog story is actually Gollum. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. This, is <laughs> <That's right. laughs> this is this is the lost alternate ending where Gollum gets the ring. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, he does get the ring in the end. That's true. He does, but only yeah. briefly. Yeah, but mm-hmm. like you're going to have to watch the film in order to find out. So hopefully. Hope whoever goes to see it, they're going to have fun. Right. Yeah, no, that sounds fun. Uh, but there is a new, apparently, Lord of the Rings anime feature that um, has been announced as being fact, fast-tracked by a New Line and Warner Brothers Animation. Um, so New Line and, uh, you know, New Line is the one that, that put out the original six uh, movies, and this is going to be called The War of the Rohirrim, uh, and it's going to follow um the uh the the hilarious antics of helm hammerhand uh who shows up in the appendix of uh uh the the lord of the rings books um and is the one who created uh uh helm's deep um and uh had some you know epic fights with uh the dunlandings um and it's i guess it's going to be uh, directed by um, somebody who's a uh, a veteran uh, anime director, the guy who did uh, Ghost in the Shell, I think, um, and Philippa Boyens, who's you know was one of the the writing team of the uh, the original uh, Lord of the Rings movies, and I think the Hobbit trilogy is signed on. I think is a consultant, um, so. It's going to be interesting to see how that comes out. I, and I think that's supposed to be coming out um, uh, either end of 2021 or early 2022. So um, there's a lot, there's, uh, there's, there's new stuff coming out. Um, yeah, and- it's, it's, it's interesting to think that it's like going to be an anime. So I'm really curious of what, I guess, the aesthetics are going to look like. I mean, I, I'm, I wonder if it's going to have like Castlevania vibes. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't claim to really understand the difference between anime and you know animation. Um, I'm sure there are some people out there listening to this who are who perfectly are, offended by that did, fact. Did you just but quit <laughs> because of us. Yeah, <laughs> well, we've lost all of those guys. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, see how it's done. I guess given the fact that it's it's animated, you know, it's a lot less production costs uh, these days, and they can get it out. Uh, quicker but you know we'll we'll see how it goes hopefully there'll be no giant robots but so i have a question <laughs> do you guys think that it's been re- uh it's been inspired by the warren rohan expansion supplement that we got and so uh helm hammerhand obviously is not someone who ever existed in books it must have been inspired by the expansion set we got right it, it could have i feel like it's with creative license it offers them a lot of like oh we can take rohan they'll know what rohan is but we can take a character no one knows about it could have been inspired by it i don't know Maybe. i mean matt said this is the best podcast um let's just say this is the best yeah. channel in general for everything so i think we probably contributed to it to that is true yeah do you, do you think maybe maybe some of the some of the lines will be will be written by the games worship team like like the book was Maybe I, I think there's going to be like Rohan Captain's name making yeah, the show, to be yeah, honest. Probably. And it won't just be a side character, be a main character. Yeah. I, I mean, I, w- I will say Helm Hammerhand is probably the character in the appendices who kind of gets the most print. Um, there is kind of a side, there is kind of a side story in the appendices that kind of goes through his, um, yeah, there, there, there's a little blurb. I can't remember exactly how long it is, but it's it's several pages on, um, you know, who he was, how he came about, how he liked to beat people to death with his fists, um, yeah, how was, he started the war with the Dunlandings. I was, so. I was, I was actually wondering, like, what, what's the, what's the story behind the, the uh, behind the hammer hand itself? Was, is he like nailing things with his, with his hand, just like? No, I think build, I read it. Building I a house. 
read it recently. I could be wrong, but I think he killed a Dunland chieftain, famous one with a single blow, ah. like Robert, Robert, the Bruce style, like slammed him in yep. the head or whatever. Um, am I right, right on that? Let's ask this. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think that's right. It's been a little while since I've, I've read it as well, but if my, my memory is, if my memory is correct, uh, he, you know, invited a bunch of local chieftains to dinner, to dinner, including a Dunlending chieftain. And um, he got into a tiff with the uh, Dunlending chieftain. I think about it. I think it had something to do with what, who, who was going to marry whose daughter or something like that. And um, uh, Helma Hammerhand insults the chieftain. The chieftain takes umbrage at this and Helma Hammer t- Hammerhand then kills him with a single blow. Um and, uh, and and thus kind of starts the the war with the Dunlendings. Um, I may have uh, I, I may have told that uh, incorrectly, and I'm sure several people will correct me if I have. But um, that's my memory. And then there's a siege of Helm's Deep where he like goes out into the snow and just kind of beats people to death. In you know, basically hunts them down and beats people to death. But sounds sounds like an anime. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so wonder, I'm sure there'll be plenty of blood and gore. I wonder if this guy has a YouTube channel I'd follow. <laughs> yeah, he like live streams it too. He's like, I'm about to go to Dunlinden Village and just beat the crap out of all the chieftains. Watch me. And then it just shows him like going to town. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think one thing we can, one thing that definitely comes out of the appendices is that Helm Hammerhand was not really a nice guy. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how he's treated in the film. Have you ever played in, uh, in the game? I have. What do you yeah, think? I, uh, you know, it, it, it's one of these, it's one, of, I mean, he's a guy that you take in the legendary Legion because he gets, he gets, you know, tremendous amounts of bonuses, but it's one of those legions where, you know, once you take it, uh, everything centers around him. Mm. Um, and I mean, he is, he is fight five and, you know, he can, he's not an invincible hero he can go down despite all his bonuses but you know it's a fun army to play where you understand that you know everything you know your entire army revolves around this one figure and you know how do i protect him and and they get lower point at lower points levels where you're not going to kind of run into a wizard or a couple of ring race they're just going to shut him down um leaving you know your captains to try and do all the work which they're probably not going to be able to do uh it's a via you know it's a it's a viable and fun army i think it's but you know kind of once you once you kind of get above 600 points or 650 points or so then you know you're you're going to be outclassed Mm. so all right um so i think the next thing we're going to do is talk about our list for this week so let me get that up on the screen here All right, so this is a list from Alexander Sporl. Um, and as always, if I've mispronounced your name, I profoundly apologize. Uh, but uh, he says, this is, a, this is a list that he describes as a strange constellation. This is for a tournament at 950 points. Uh, the scenarios are known. It's breakthrough, contest of champions, command the battlefield with um, a house rule, uh, fog of war and assassination. Um, and this is the list. Uh, so it is Durin with uh, 12. Uh, he calls them throne guards. I don't think that's what they're, what they're called in the list. Are they um, hearth, uh, guards? Guard. Hearth, 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 hearth guards? No? Hearth guards, Up, I think. Upgrade. Right, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Upgrade the Kazakh guards. Right, upgrade the Kazakh guards. They, they become burly, I think. Is that, yeah. That's the upgrade. Yeah. That's correct, yeah. Um, uh, and then Tom Bombadil who's one of my favorite figures, uh, Legolas on horse with three Merkwood elves with shield, three with glaives and bow, uh, and one with glaive. Um, then we have uh, Haldir with bow armor, five Galadrim with bow and spear, one with spear, shield and banner, and nine guards with pikes. So a lot of fight six in there. Uh, comes in at 38 models. And he says, uh, the plan for this list is that Haldir will hide in the fog uh, he, he'll hide in fog of war um, and in assassination. Uh, 
And in close combat, Tom is going to follow around Durham, uh, Durin, otherwise Legolas, and kind of help him out. Um, so Legolas can spam some might for shots. Um, and, you know, he can protect and keep Durin alive. Um, so that is the list. I have some thoughts about this, but this is definitely an unusual list. I mean, every, any list you, you see that has Tom Bombadil in it is an unusual list. So I'm going to get some thoughts from you guys before we uh, before I pitch in here. Also, yeah, I, uh, he says there just one, uh, one line that you that you missed. Uh, nope. he's, he says, I post the list because this is a very strange setting with competitive builds with Sauron, Smaug, etc. And, oh, yes. and and there is a two hours and 45 minutes time per game, which is a lot of time. Plenty of time to work with. Yeah. I, I kind of like that, though, because, I mean, first off the bat, like, burly fight six dudes. That battle line is going to be <laughs> disgusting. And then any fell beast or anything, that's going to be in your back, like... No, here's fight six with like shield. That that's insane. I do like how you commented in two hours and forty five minutes because this army is built for that. Yeah. I think the elves go a lot further. What the the guards are like, courage six or seven or something crazy. Uh, the the fountain court or not the fountain, whatever they're called, the fight six ones. Yeah, I, I really really like this list. I think it it is strange, but it's when you're reading it, like Matt, Matt said he wanted to go over this and I was like, okay, let's see. But as you're reading off, I'm like, Oh Lord, have mercy. This is very interesting. <laughs> um, I kind of like the composition, to be honest. I'm curious with what the meta is there. Um, whether you could get lady in light, lady of light. But then again, I don't really know all the strange things Bombadil does. I think I'd probably wait to comment on that after Matt probably explains Bombadil. Because I know all the strange things he does, and he does do a, an awful lot of strange things. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially, especially when you're fighting against a lot of really strange things on the other side too. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, it's obviously it's a, it's a very strange list. It's it's very unusual. It's it's just like a bag of bag of little bit of everything. But well, things like uh, Durin, obviously he's super strong, won't die, and will kill a lot. Legolas does his thing with with picking off targets and taking out fell beasts, well, uh, riders and just uh, harassing. Haldir is probably there because we won't fight six in the army. Um, and then Tom Bombadil is that other thing. So uh, in terms of number of models, 38 doesn't seem as that much for, for almost 1,000 points. But on the other hand, you roll like defense seven, fight six, strength four with burly, so you don't really if if anyone decides to engage your front line then they're dead so 38 seems, seems it might be okay in the end and like the fight six things like the watcher or whatever who are gonna pop up in the back line it's like it's it's the, dead. the elves can take care of that <laughs> yeah like up oh, see you later yeah no i think uh tomba model basically uh instantly wins fights right so he yes he does but then if he is involved in the fight you don't make any strikes afterwards so he right, basically right, comes right. in and says peace and everybody kind of says oh yeah okay you're, you're not so that, bad that a guy, can come walk away in a lot of that can be very handy at a 950 points with two what what was it two hours and 45 minutes like i think that just makes tom bumble that much better because oh, you're yeah. gonna like stop everything from working you don't really need him as an assassination squad, like you would use with somebody with the ring, you just need him to stop whatever the opponent has. And then that burly line is going to break through everything. 38 models isn't bad too, because D7. Yeah. I, th I think this has like yeah, a lot of potential. And he even like says it's, it too. It's D7 and fight six almost across the board with those nine yeah. guards of Gladrum Court. Yeah. yeah. And you have three strikers too, because just why not? Rogue yeah. strikers, that is. Yeah, no, it seems it seems really really cool. Uh, so let's go into Bombadil. Over to Matt. Okay, so um, so Bombadil. All right, so Bombadil comes with with a host of special rules. Um, the the first one being that nobody can get within Tom, one inch of Tom Bombadil unless the player who's playing Tom wants him to. So he can he can he, he basically creates a force field around himself that is. Uh, 28 millimeters um, wide. Uh, and there, there's some debate on this because one inch is slightly more than a base depth. 
um, whether Tom can just come up and touch a figure and make him impossible to contact, or at least impossible to contact by anybody that Tom doesn't want to have contact that figure. Um, people have griped about this and I, I, I know when I play him, I, I tend not to play with that interpretation because basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to like take a figure or, you know, technically up to six figures and just completely shield them from anything your opponent can do just by having them move into contact with Tom Bombadil. Yeah. That doesn't sound like, like they intended. Yeah. So, I mean, what I usually say is, you know, if somebody's touching Tom Bombadil, you know, there, there's a point on the exact side, exact opposite side of Tom where, that figure can be touched, but generally it does mean, and I don't think there's any way to geometrically get around this, that no more than what, if you're touching Tom Bombadil, basically no more than one figure can get in on Tom. You know, basically the, the guy who's directly across from Tom can get in, but that's about it. Um, so that's, uh, it, you know, and he also functions as a roadblock. So you can throw him in to, um, uh, you know, to tie up a flank or uh, uh, whatever you want to do, because, you know, this isn't a zone of control effect. So even if Tom is, you know, kind of in the, I mean, nobody can charge Tom unless you want him to, but even if Tom charges in and into a fight, he doesn't lose this ability. Nobody else can get uh, near him that you don't want him to. Uh, his, his other big ability or the spells he comes with, um, he can banish, which is great, but he comes with 17 will and he has a spell that he can cast on a two up that allows the target, and I believe it's anybody within six inches, uh, can, it will, if the spell is cast, will basically regrow um, one wound, one might, one will, and one fate. So it's not that you're picking one of these. You get all of that stuff back when he casts the spell. Um, and, uh, and he has, like I said, I think he has like 17 will. He's like a ring wraith. So when his will goes away, he goes away. Uh, and he does lose a will uh, whenever he fights in a combat, um, but that's a lot of times you can cast that spell. And in a general, in a general game, you're going to be casting that spell every turn, and you're going to have enough will left over that you can two dice it on a bunch of turns. So if you have the critical one where, like, your leader's out of resources and you really need to get that spell off um, to uh, uh, to give him his resources back, you can two dice it just to make sure it gets done. Uh, the other thing that spell does, by the way, is it cures. Basically, it eliminates all spells that have been cast on a figure, and it eliminates kind of all conditions that have been cast on a figure. So if somebody gets paralyzed, Tom can cast this spell on him, and he'll pop back up and be fine. Um, or if you know somebody gets transfixed by a ring wave, Tom will cast a spell on him, and the guy's fine. Um, so if you're going second in the turn, you can basically just take away the effect of one spell, spell that anybody's going to cast. Uh, and then the, the third, you know, the third benefit Tom has is if Tom does choose to go into a combat, uh, that combat will automatically be won by Tom's side, although nobody can make strikes. Um, so those are three, there are, there are a few, uh, there are a few other special rules that Tom has, but those are the, those are the three biggies. Um, so what you use him for is an, basically an infinite stat regenerator, um, and uh, so, you know, if he were to follow Durin around, um, you know, Durin, he would make sure that Durin never ran out of might. Um, Durin only has one fate, but he could get that back. Uh, and, you know, if he's, if he's following Legolas around, then, you know, Legolas would essentially get a free might of turn um, when he shoots at folks. Uh, you know, with that said, Tom is 160 points, and it's 160 points for a figure that is not going to kill anyone else the entire game. He, he, he is the ultimate support hero. Uh, that is all he does. Um, so you need to work fairly significantly to get the most out of Tom. Um, and I mean, I wonder whether Durin is the guy to have Tom support. Uh, I mean, just to give you some ideas here, I mean, ideally because he gets back, because when he casts a spell, he gives back a wound, a might, a will, and a fate. Um, you want to have, you want to have somebody who can do things or at least have an army that can do things with all of those stats to get the most back from Tom. Um, 
you know, Durin's got the one fate, so he can cast it on the turn. And what 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 this essentially means, by the way, if you're if you're Durin is um you, you roll your die on your fate. If you roll a three, you're automatically gonna might it up to a a, a four to get that done because you know you're gonna get both a might and the fate back. Um there's nothing in this list though that uses will. Um I mean, just a couple thoughts. I mean, I understand the the appeal of Durin and you get the hearth guards and the hearth guards are really tough guys and they're going to be backed up by guards of the Gladrum court. So they're going to be fight six really tough guys. Um, just some ideas of other folks that create interesting synergies with Tom Bombadil. Um, one is Thror. And the reason I say Thror is because while Thror like Durin has one fate, he has the Arkenstone, so that that fate sticks around on a four plus, uh, and he loses. You know, it still survives, and he loses on the three plus. Um, so, if you if you have a situation where something really heavy is going to come in and pound that figure, uh, you know, like somebody like Gulivar comes in and you know wins the fight and then rends the hero. Um, Thror can can shake off, you know, not you know, not just one of those at most on that turn. You know, he he conceivably can throw off, shake off all three. You know, and if he wants to commit his might to it, um, uh, you know, he can he can fade off all of those. I mean, Thror, I think, being followed by Tom Bombadil would essentially be unkillable, um, just because of the way his fate works. I mean, you can. You can imagine a circumstance where, you know, Thor rolled like, you know, a one on the first turn with his fate where, you know, he could, and he didn't have enough might to, to might that up to a, a four or a three where he could go down, but it's pretty unlikely. So that's, that's one possibility is Thor. Thor has an inter- interesting dynamic with Tom. Um, the other one is, uh, is, is a ball and flowy combination. Um, and I'm just thinking dwarves here. There's a bunch of things you can do with Tom and other figures, but um, Balin and Flo, I mean, obviously you lose the hearth guard at that point, um, but, but having Tom near Balin and Flo, it would mean that Flo, instead of being able to turn off somebody's special ability uh, for just three turns and then be at a will, Flo could just turn off somebody's special ability for the, essentially the entire game, uh, which is, which is a fun thing to be able to do. So over and above the funky stuff that Tom is going to be uh, doing to your army, you could have Flowey just sit there, sit there using his ability each turn. Just it's like, yeah, okay. You brought the shadow Lord. He's not going to do anything the entire game. Oh, you brought Galadriel lady of light, no blinding light for the entire game, which, uh, which does some interesting stuff. Uh, the other. So anyway, that's, that's just some thoughts. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with pairing Tom with Durin in this. I think there are some other figures other than Durin that Tom would create some interesting dynamics with that wouldn't necessarily come across with Durin. Uh, and I guess my only, my, my minor tweak for this list would be, I would think if, if Haldir is going to try and hide and cut some of these scenarios, and that seems to be a reasonable thing to do, it's probably worth spending five points on giving him an elven cloak so he can hide that much better uh, off on his own. And he's not yeah. going to get you know targeted by magic. From I, I'd say the same thing away. because you're, you're going to think like assassination and fog of war, they're going to definitely target Aldir because mm-hmm. he's like right. the only weak thing. Yeah. I think that's what, that's, that's what you're alluding to. I kind of like the idea of Tom and Duren with Duren because Duren's probably going to always be where the action is. I'm looking through the scenarios contest. He's going to be right in the action. Uh, I don't want to come in the battlefield, but some of these different ones that that war band seems like it's always going to be where the middle of the action is. And then Tom could probably go in different directions because Tom actually doesn't move that fast. Yeah, he's, so he's just six me. inches, although he's not slowed down by any terrain. So he's basically, all, and, he, and he always rolls a six on all of his tests. Yeah. So well, it makes he, me, he basically makes me can go like, six inches wherever he wants. Also, he's Maybe that's what that's what anyway. was thinking. Mm. Yeah, he's faster than Durant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I do have a question. Do Haldir doesn't have March, right? Neither does Lilith. Uh No, neither of them no, have March. No, they don't. Yeah, there's, okay. there's, no, there's no March here. So it is like there's some weaknesses here and there, um, but of course they say they're built 
looking for a specific meta. This, I think it's a German uh, event, so they, they would know the meta, meta there and the scenarios. But yeah, I'd say the only weakness would be coming up against like maybe a crossbow, crossbow spam, siege weapons, um, things like that, where they can kind of pepper beforehand. Yeah, ex gen gen generally lack like of any blinding light or anything like that. If let's say a, a thousand points, you can come up against something like 30, 30 bows from Harad, and then yeah, all this, all this, your, your your entire front line is amazing. But then by the time you fight, you don't really have a front line. Yeah, like I I, I did a hypothetical list like at around a thousand with just pure pure uh pure umbar, and you can get around like 25, 26 crossbows, two or th two or three of them with might. Like that would maybe take out quite yeah. a lot you know yeah this, this list would not like that because i mean tom is great but tom does nothing for ordinary figures because they have no might will and fate when they die they die tom can't bring them yeah. back from the grave i mean i mean the scenario is specifically let's say contests uh contests and uh and breakthrough and, and fog of war assassination like they they imply that chances are people are going to be bringing some some larger yeah creatures some monsters and not necessarily spamming too many balls and even even the the like mobility wise uh things they're going to be getting like fast speedy creatures like a drake mm -hmm. or or the watcher or something like that he he kind of talked about that but yeah i really really like i think i said it before but i really like the list for that yeah. because you do have that fight six everywhere yeah. you have strike everywhere and you have what's his face to just like make nothing happen like it is yeah. i'm really curious like alexander like i yeah, really would be curious for you to tell us how you did yeah no that'd be interesting i mean i guess one last thought here, and this is a Tom Bombadil thought, and, and again, this would require major surgery to the list, so you know who knows. But Tom and a wizard work really well together, and you know Tom and somebody like you know Gandalf or or Saruman, or or I, I mean in particular Gandalf, because Gandalf has a lot of things that he can channel, um, because Tom allows a wizard basically to channel every turn, um, and basically yeah, every every spell I'm going to pat cast is going to be channeled if Tom is standing next to that wizard. And, uh, and yeah, that, that's an awful lot of, of power that you can put into spells there. You know, once you get your ch channel blinding light up, your channel, uh, um, terrifying aura up, uh, and then you start, uh, you know, channeling, you know, other spells, um, and, uh, you can do a lot of damage with that. I mean, I, I mean, obviously that would change the whole concept of this mm -hmm. list. I'm really just kind of mentioning it just as it's, yeah, if you're going to bring Tom, think about what, how to get the most out of him. Because if you're going to dump 160 points into a figure that isn't going to kill anyone, you really need to figure out how to get the most out of him in a list. And, you know, having Tom in a list where, you know, 20 crossbows, may shoot down your entire front line um that may not actually be a, a winning combination but you know on on the other hand if what you're going to do is fight smaug and uh you just need to have um you just need to have tom uh you know kind of basically run into smaug each turn and that or run into sauron each turn or you know cast a yeah banish Sauron and then run in to make sure that the fight is won. That's, um, that might be the I, way to go. I have, a, I have a question though. Like it's kind of like off that topic, but it is with this list. He says that they have house rule of alternating war bands in Maelstorm between opponents. I actually oh, have yeah, done I've, that. I've seen that before. Yeah. I've played that. Yeah. I've, I've, I've done it at events too. Yeah. It kind of like, in actually, my opinion, like a Maelstorm, whoever goes first is like automatically has a disadvantage. Yeah most most of the times you know what i mean so what are your guys thoughts on that like should I mean, it be i wouldn't say necessarily uh whoever goes first has disadvantage in that um generally if you go in second then you're gonna be spending more might to actually to actually put your warbands in the right places so that they're not stuck in between the warbands that your opponent has already deployed but generally yeah it is an advantage to go to, uh to go second but uh yeah i've seen that before and i thought it was it actually made the scenario better because it just it just makes it more balanced. Like I go, you go, I go, you go. Mm -hmm. So I, I prefer that much, much more here. And it makes it more more suspenseful too, actually, because yeah. that's what the male storm is for, suspense. And it's yeah. like, okay, shoot, I'm gonna go here, you're gonna go there. Oh my gosh. And it makes those war bands that haven't hit the board that much more important. I don't know. It's very yeah. interesting. Just want to bring it up. 
Yeah, uh, I, I guess there's not a point I was going to raise. Uh, he says here, otherwise Legolas can spam Might for his shots uh, with Tom. Um, so Legolas, essentially, if you're if you're uh, giving him the extra Might, it's, it's almost like he gets plus one to wound on all, on all of his rolls. And so, again, if it's a high point game with a lot of big things, it's, it's going to be very easy to make Legolas cause wounds on, on, some, on some big creatures. So with the... Whether like even even if it's like a, a like a dragon or something like that, it's just, it's it's essentially only the five followed by four if you have that free might point, free extra might point. So uh, if you add that to his normal might already, I would say Legolas could be a major threat here to those big things. But then again, like if you if you're surrounded by like thirty or forty models extra, then Tom and Legolas are not actually doing anything. So it just really depends on who you're running to. Yeah, I mean Tom is Tom is definitely somebody who I mean who is who is a hero buff, and I mean if he's if if Legolas is going to be the guy he's buffing that turn, I mean you know if necessary, uh, you know Legolas can 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 feel free in the right circumstance to pump all three of his might into a wound roll um if he wants to like if this is the one that's going to take down the ra- the ring wraith and know that you know in a couple turns he'll be back up to a decent amount of might um but yeah you're right if this you know if he if he runs into a um i mean so i guess i guess another counter to this list with 38 models would be the um yeah i've got 140 goblins <laughs> in goblin town or something like that uh and this list would not have a very good answer to that um because you know tom's not going to stop 140 well, goblins just running all all around this list and then it would still have a have a good answer to death as long as as long as you can ensure that they don't surround you they'll just never get through from three or four fr- front line like they're going to be dying on, yeah, on two. but in two hours and 45 minutes how are you going to ensure that they're not going to surround you um yeah well well you will <laughs> uh which by the way is one thing why i I'm, i don't i don't think march is ne- really necessary in this list because they are two hour and 45 at, minutes at 45 minutes you don't you probably don't need it yeah you'll get there eventually yeah yeah, yep. yeah. so okay cool. all right alexander yeah let us know Good how this, this went this looks like a really fun list for a really fun tournament so i'll be interested to see how this comes out all right. Um, so with that, why don't we discuss another really fun list for another really fun tournament that Mick's not going to be able to go to? Yay. So all right, all right here we go. Um, for this one, I decided to do that thing where you know you uh, you put your money where your mouth is thing, where all, all the time on this podcast for the last year we've been talking about how amazing Lake Down is and how you should bring in Master of Lake Down and Alfred to, into into everything. And so here's unpainted Master of Lake Down. Here I'm in the middle of gluing my uh, Lake Down guards, which I won't be able to use. So um, it's a 600 it, point list. I was just going to say this is a 600 point tournament. Okay. Got it, it is. Yeah. Um, and it has a few things which, well, at least, at least a couple of things which we always talked about. So it uh, starts with Master of Lake Down, Alfred. Um, then they they have split into their warbands. They have twelve guards of uh, uh, twelve guards with spears, eight guards with spears and bows, and then three guards uh, without anything. Then uh, third warband is Galadriel, Lady of Light, allied on her own. And then we have Haldir, who has become a hero of Balor these days. Uh, he is uh, with an elf bow and heavy armor. He is leading 10 Galadrim warriors with shields, three guards of the Galadrim court, and two Galadrim knights with shield. And I just I just realized that I put them as 18 points each. They were supposed to be 19. So um, I guess they don't have shields. Um, so uh, this list, essentially, it, it's 600 points, 42 models. Uh, we have eight points of might plus however many Alfred gives us. Um, there is Galadriel, Lady of Light for um, for the Blinding Light and Banish and all that stuff. The leader of this army, it's tricky to pick, but I think I would pick Haldir to be the leader. 
um, because generally I want uh, I like Galadriel to be to be fighting as much as possible. And Haldir with his bow, he may want to be shooting. He may want to be doing other things. Um, he may not always want to get get engaged so easily. Um, essentially, the, the the army works by putting the ten Galadriel warriors with shields in front, putting the uh, uh, guardsmen with spears behind them, um, using the the Galadriel court guards into into different positions. Then I have two Galadriel knights for that extra speed. Um, 42 models, uh, and I have eight bows on, on my warriors, and obviously one on Haldir. I decided not to give uh, bows to any of the Gladrim because um, they would just be very expensive models with defense five, and I wanted my Gladrim warriors with shields to be defense six and have a strength a, a, a defense six front line. Well, okay, yep, fair. So, uh, and, and I also decided that since, since I already have Lady of Light, um, the eight bows on the guards are kind of enough in a sense that uh, if I'm going to be winning uh, a, 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 any any bow, bow battles, then, um, then I'm going to win them anyway, whether, you ha whether I have eight bows or 12 or, or 13, uh, if, if I have Galadriel. And if I'm going to be losing those, th those bow battles, then I'm just going to be walking forward anyway and not shooting. And Galadriel still protects me. So I, I didn't think additional elves with bows would, would do me any good. So I would just prefer having some defense six at the front. And so yeah, that is that is that is the list. All right. So let me let me ask some questions and and get your thinking on them. I guess before I launch into it, I guess the, the thought I would have is before I would take the shields off the Galadrim Knights, I would just take three spears off of the Lake Town Guard. Uh probably, um, probably, yeah. I mean, I just literally Noticed this moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, but anyway, I, I think I, I had written them as eighteen. So, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Um. Uh. So I guess the first question is, um, no march in this list, and no march. Uh, uh, I wanted to get your thinking on that. So, um, because of the fact that I wanted defense six, I didn't really have many choices of allying. I had to have, bring a hero of valor. I wanted to have very high numbers, and I wanted to have Galadriel Lady Flight, and I wanted to have um, uh, Lake Town guards. Well, yeah, uh, Lake Town guards with uh, with their banner reroll to be standing behind elves. So when I added all that together, I realized that. There isn't really any spare points to bring anyone who might be marching, so that is the obvious downside. However, um, Lady of Light protects from bow fire quite well, so if I do need to get faster to places, obviously, if I need to get faster into into the center of the board because someone's getting there first, then I won't. But if I need to get faster across the board to someone, then generally with blinding light, I don't necessarily have to go there so fast. So, all right. So then that kind of leads into my next question, which is no Braga. And uh, again, curious about that. <laughs> um, again, there just aren't enough points if you're trying to stuff all this stuff into, into the army. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's just, that's just one of those things where if you're trying to make a list which will have both a strong line, a strong front line and very high numbers, and Galadriel, there are just certain sacrifices you have to make. Like, Braga... <laughs> and the master turns to Braga and says, "Sorry, you're one of those sacrifices." Yeah, Braga... pushes, pushes, him, pushes him off the boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Braga, Braga would be the fifty points I just don't have. <laughs> and I like, um, I've been looking at various various ways of doing it. And I've, uh, uh, for some time, I was thinking this is just going to be fifteen Galadriel warriors with shields at the front. Uh, then backed by uh, Lake Town guards with spears, and thanks to Banner reroll, it's 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 quite a strong strong front line. But then, I do like a couple of of, of fight six models. I do like a couple of um, knights. So yeah, it's it's basically a list where I thought I want these things in there, but in order to buy them, I have to like just forget about all this other cool stuff, and that's just what came out. 
Yeah, I think so, that's, that's why most yeah, people are like 600 isn't ideal for most yeah, players because like you have to take out so much of what you want to bring. Yeah, I personally really, really don't like 600, but I'm trying to make lists for 600 because of Articon as well. And so yeah. I, I love playing like seven, 800 and 1,000, but 600 and less, it's like I, I so often just want to have certain things, but you have to make the sacrifices. And then you're like, what if I run into this? Oh, I just lose. What if I run mm -hmm. into this? Oh, that's just going to be really annoying. At higher points levels, you can come up with ways to have the, the, uh, uh, the tools you want. And I always feel like at higher points levels, it's more about the gaming skill and less about the army list. Whilst at lower points, it's actually more about the army building and less about the gaming skill. Yeah, I'd, I'd actually agree with that. Um, I do have a question, though. You have how many elves exactly? Um, uh, in total, there are 15 and how When it comes so to warriors? Uh, so there are 10. Between, and then you have how many Lake Town? Um, there are uh, 23 Lake Town. Okay. So like Galadriel only has what, six inches each way for Blinding Light? Correct. Yeah. And for the, for the, for the Terrifying Aura, yeah. um, how would you protect the flanks? Would you keep the flanks just Lake Town or kind of spread it out? Try well, to so spread the elves out? It would really depend on the scenarios. Like uh, if, if I don't have to split, if I, if I can bubble up, then I'll just bubble up. Um, otherwise, um, well, obviously terrain is, is one thing, but hopefully the idea behind the list is that you try to bubble up whenever possible. And when you can't, you just figure things out as they, uh, as they come. Yeah. Cause I've, I've actually seen quite a lot of Lake town guard like semi spams pop up with adding all those cool mm -hmm. essential pieces that you're adding. And when I go up against it against friends, at least like a year ago or a year and a half ago, what I always found is in scenarios, they would throw their like not such high point models to go get objectives and stuff. And they'd be picked off really easily with shooting sure. or assassination squads and cab. Cause they are only D four. So I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. I mean, that is a valid point, but then, but then, I will probably be outnumbering most of my opponents uh, with with forty two mm. models. So, yeah, like various ver various other other lists I've built over over the last few months, um, both good and evil. Some of them are uh, uh, were like 28, 32, 34 models. So, yeah, even if you're able to to pick off those those models that, that have gone for an objective, chances are more of these models have gone for an objective than than, than my opponents have sent. Mm. Now, now I'm also curious. Six hundred points isn't that common. Actually, I don't think it's common at all. In the States, what is the mm -hmm. typical... Because I know we, we talk about 800, 800 points in America. Typically, yeah. you'd see maybe 40, 45 models. What is the typical for 600? Because like initially, I just think, and I'm like, 42 models, that isn't like... But then I'm like, oh, 600, that is a lot of models. But is, is that considered a horde or semi-horde? Well, so, so, so that's the thing. Like it's, it's, it, it, again, varies from army to army, but like I've seen, I've seen uh, really good lists at like seven or 800, which, which, had, which had less models. Mm -hmm. um, I've also, so, so like at, at 600, unless you're playing something like Lake Town or uh, Goblin Town or Moria, it's rare that you can go over 40, 40 models. And especially if you want to have any cool toys with them. Yeah. Yeah, thirty I think is probably the average. At... Thirty will be the average. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah, actually okay. a. Um, I'm I'm not sure if we talked about this one before, but um, so there are there's a few tournaments coming up in the UK at the moment, which are like 450 and 550. Um, I I don't think before Articon there is a single like tournament which is which which plays more than 600, uh, any of the major ones. Because. So. So uh, there's even a rule that's been introduced by, by a couple of POs um, where in order to take um, the range of Pathelion list at, at those lower, lower points levels, you have to additionally always bring uh, Sam and Frodo with you, which in, in case of like, let's say, um, higher points levels of, of, of like 800 or so, you'd be, you'd be taking Frodo anyway with the ring. But um, at, at lower points levels, that just means that the, the, the possibility of facing a, like a 30, 35 model Ranger Fatillion list, which will just run you over both, bow, both with bows and in combat. I was going to say, it's not going to run you over as much as it's going to pincushion you to death. 
yeah yeah i mean even with blinding light like oh. yeah. yeah but like i mean now now in some of these tournaments it's not it's not even even that possible because because you have to take those additional models so then you end up with like let's say 20 23 balls or something like that which which then if you have galadriel doesn't really matter to you that they have that many balls so i i have been running the math just because i like braga Brock, I think is great in this list. You could, if you dropped one Galadrim Knight, mm -hmm. one Galadrim with shield, one Lake Town with spear, and one Lake Town without spear, you could fit in Braga, which would give you, which would bring you down to 39 models. Um, right. And give you another, basically, a, another might battery, because he's, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, potentially a fight five might battery with infinite heroic defenses, mm -hmm. which might be helpful in this list um, where, yeah, the two people that you have that fight are Haldir and Galadriel, and it might be worth having another tank uh, run around, you know, tank slash, and it solves your March problem because he also has, you know, potentially infinite marches. Aha, uh -huh. and so this is why it is good to get your list reviewed on an unexpected podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is your tournament prep. Like, you, yeah. you can't go to it. Like, this is, this will be it. Yeah, I'm a, I am just saying that, Matt, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, that's super smart, actually. <laughs> um, and uh, so, I mean, you do have to convert a Braga. Um, or... Well, um, I, have, I have suddenly a few spare Lake Town Guards. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> there you go. And um, I'm, I'm still in the middle of cutting and gluing all these guys. So, you know, <laughs> I might just come up with something. In, in fact, there is a spare amount of Sauron here just standing. If I was to cut his head off, maybe, and put a, I don't know, a Lake Town Guard head on, on top of Mount of Sauron, may, maybe it'll pass. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Um, yeah, yeah, that may work. Uh, what I did for mine was um, I took... Uh, I think I took a uh, a lake town, one of the Lake Town guard with sword, and I cut off his head, and I actually put the the head from um, Gary and Lord of Dale on, because um, mm -hmm. he actually kind of looks like Braga, who doesn't wear a helmet um, in the uh, in the movie, um, so it actually came out looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Nice. I, I just did the Lake Town captain guard because he has the the cape and everything in the same aesthetic of the Lake Town, and I just chopped his head off and put like some random mustached person yeah <laughs> a random guy with mustache <laughs> on there yeah, yeah um, it, one other thing you wanted to think about if you wanted to put bows uh you know wanted to get some elf bows in there is um f you know, as in the list as it's currently configured if you um got rid of one lake town guard with spear you could give bows to all your gladrum knights which might actually be a. Uh, you mean you mean my one Galadrim knight, which which you've left in my list now? Uh, no, you actually I, I've left <laughs> you with two Galadrim knights in your list. But I, I'm just saying, as originally configured, where you had three, you get rid of. Oh and, no, no, I, no. I, I had I had I had three uh, guards of the Galadrim court. Then, oh, you only had two Galadrim knights. Yeah, I only had. Two. Okay, good, good. I had I had three when I wrote that uh, mm. wrote that down. But yeah, okay, yeah. so the. All right, so you wouldn't even. So anyway, my point was, I guess it, as originally configured, if you want to put an elf bow in this list, I think the place to start is with the Galadriel no, you see, You see, I think, um, like, I've been trying to make lists with, uh, of, of Lake Town, uh, let's say, with, with, with Lothlorien, with Rivendell, with uh, Thranduil's Halls. Like, I literally have a list of Lake Town with, with, with each of these in different configurations. And so... With, I, with, with the Champion's Chariot? Yeah, well, except that one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so every time I'm looking at these lists, I'm always just looking and thinking, if I take any any bows, then, I, then I'm losing the defense six at the front. And so even though I've always thought elf bows are great, I'm like, I don't really want elf bows. I think they, they seem to be overrated compared to just having a very strong line. Yeah, well, no, my, only, my only point was if you wanted to get a few, yeah, if you had some extra points and wanted to get a few in there, you can put them on the Gladrim Knights without losing yeah, your defense possibly. six in the front. Yeah, yeah. I mean, probably in the ideal world, I would try to keep like fourteen or thirteen defense six guys at the front, but the but the but the fight six thing is also kind of appealing. That's that's like the really annoying thing with this list. Like I'm I'm just trying to bring all these cool things together and have a horde, 
and have Galadriel and have all this by high five value. Yeah, I, th- I think I think it's a good balance because like no one can really say like, hey, I have forty two models at six hundred with a couple fight six sprinkled in. Like that that's that's pretty good. I do like Matt's plan though with like that might battery and the march. Definitely, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that'd be all the, all the changes I'd make because you do want to keep, like you said, all those little things that you added. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I couldn't come up with a perfect list because then what would you guys say? Fair enough. Yeah, that's true. That's you right. did on purpose, actually. You were like, I well, gotta make one. <laughs> it, it, Mick is like one of those Renaissance masters who in, it deliberately incorporates a a subtle flaw somewhere <laughs> in the list. Um, you know, just to, to you know, just 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 to show, you know, and he puts it out and says, "Look, I, you know, I know this is there, and this is this is to show that I can be great even with this flaw." Yeah, exactly. We we correct him, and he's like, "Congratulations, you are now enlightened." <laughs> that, that was the goal. And right. we're like, "What?" Congratulations, you've done the thing that you were meant to do. Yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> yes. All right, let's <laughs> let's hear uh, Rainier's list, which he will be dueling me me with. Ooh, okay, so I brought a variation of a list that I have played, and I kind of tried to fit it into 600 points, but I built built it in a complete different way that I have ever played it because I wanted to change it up. So I'm bringing a Corsair Serpent Horde list. Whoa, what a never, shock. Ne- never thought about what that one. What a shock. What a shock. Yeah, we're talking Articon. I'm like, I'm not going to play something I don't know if I go to Articon at 600. <laughs> Well, it's well, also I I don't have the books with me in soul right now, so I was like the only profiles I know off my heart are these ones. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. Like since it's Articon, I would just pick to play something I've never played because then if you win it with with a list that's not that you've never played before, <laughs> that just makes it even better. That's true. That's true. Well, and, that's true. And, and if you don't win it, you've got your ready made excuse. Yeah, I just brought. Well, it. yeah, yeah. yeah I, just like, brought I, can, I just brought Lady Glad. I wasn't taking it seriously. I didn't think it would do any good. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah i i did like yeah okay so here it is so i have uh who is it dalmir he's leading 10 arbalisters uh five shielded corsairs and three speared corsairs one with a shield uh so that's a fully kitted warband right there i have the next warband is a bosun shock here comes the reavers leading nine reavers and three speared corsairs fully kid warband right there and the last warband will be soladan mounted with three serpent riders three warriors with bow and spear and one arborcan guard so you're looking at 600 models or not 600 models <laughs> well you are you, you, number yeah. but like 50 yeah. times i'm like goblin town and i chopped them in half so they're only two points each so, so i've got uh 600 points 40 models so I have like about the same, two less than you, um, 10 crossbows, three bows, and 13 throwing weapons. I kind of highlighted the shooting, but that's not what this army's kind of made for. I kind of wanted to spam Reavers because I assumed at 600 points, someone would build against, uh, what's it called? Against shooting. So they probably have Lady of Light, Blinding Light, and Terrifying Things. So I wanted to build against that. So I have my Reavers in there. Uh, three serpent riders for the for the game for the scenario game i guess soladan's mounted with a six inch banner and yeah basically pepper with 10 crossbows and a couple bows is is the ideal thing to do maybe pepper with some throwing weapons and when combat hips hits hopefully lines aren't as strong and then i have a reaver by himself rolling three dice with um one plus to wound possibly two plus if he's trapped and he'd usually have someone behind behind him too so you're having like a each each person in the battle line actually each fight's rolling about four dice in the fight with um one plus to wound usually yeah so and it passes terrifying test or passes uh terror test automatically so yeah that's what i wanted to build it for i didn't really know to be honest how to build for a 600 point list um i wouldn't yeah i i didn't know what's high what's not i thought 40 models with the potential to do a lot of killing is good um shooting what probably won't work too much against mick but has the potential at, at an articon style list so yeah that's that's my list um a lot of killing powder power obvious weakness low armor which you're going to get with corsairs and serpent horde but with the banner of soladan and the massive killing i guess potential i kind of like it so was it 
in Suleiman's Warband, was it three serpent guard or three ser- serpent raiders? Three serpent raiders. Raiders. Okay. So riders, yeah. So they're, riders, they're, they're, yeah, they 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 all have lands at fight four. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they have that cool kind of like bone aesthetic coming out of their back. Yeah. Got it. All right. So um, so your march okay. lives with Suleiman as well. Yeah. That's that's that's, that's marches with Suleiman, or yeah. I could use it with the boast. Yeah. 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 And uh, and six might. Yeah, six might. So on the lower end, but yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah, the potential of Dalmir, Dalmir would be thrown into combat to do a lot of killing. I thought at 600 points, you'd probably see some of my hordes. Of course, that might not work too well against Mix because he has fight five. But yeah, he would be thrown into it. And I'm also wanted him in the list because um, he has heroic defense. So you could like stop a mega hero or a monster. And at 600, you probably only see one of those. I have to, I have to point out that like, um, it's the same thing that we've been talking about like in, in multi episodes. For example, in my list, I had both Galadriel and, and uh, Legolas, who we, who we all listed in like, our top five models on the good side. And then you have Suladan and Dalamir. Suladan was obviously like the all-time best. <laughs> and, and Dalamir was generally like also, also like somewhere, somewhere in the top five. It's like, yeah, so we're kind of like leaning yeah. on to... Did like, you have Legolas or... in your list? Yeah, he did have Legolas. Oh no, no, no! Sorry, 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 sorry. Not Legolas. I had, I had Halder. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, there was, there, <laughs> there was Legolas in this list too. <laughs> but, wow, but, there is, but, but it, there is, it, there, it is a, the... there is another list where I have uh, Lake Town ally with Thrandall's host, and Legolas lives there. <laughs> so yeah, but it is interesting you say that too because, like, with the list you make, I you, we do see Halder a lot, yeah. and it's kind of like we both are picking Lady of Light and Soladan are arguably, in my opinion, the two yeah. best models in the game. Yeah. So it's like pick those, but also Dalmir and Haldir are sleepers for what they do at their points well, that's the cost. Thing. Especially, especially on, on lower points levels, like, like 600, like things which, which may uh, uh, either, either things which are as powerful as the, as the, like the, the Galadriel, Suladan, Legolas, Dalmir, or pick things where um, you have a cheap way of bringing a lot of models. Like, for example, I really love Witch King uh, with like pretty much no stats. Who basically gives you 18 orcs, and it's like there's almost no other hero in the game who can who can bring so many models for virtually free. Yeah, and I think that's what like the ideal, I guess you want to say, you, you you people ally in Lady Light because she does so much for the army, but like Haldir has the potential to get the fight six. Yeah, that's what makes him super important. Dalmir has the potential to get extremely cheap, like. F- f- seven point models with backstabbers and throwing weapons. Yeah, like Dal- that's the appeal with eighteen models in the warband. Yeah, Dalamir gives you gives you the eighteen models, and he only costs what ninety or something like that. Yeah, it's like it's it's super wild. Even Soladan, yeah. for all he does, and then he can get like serpent raiders who are yeah. cheap and a whole bunch of things. So uh, I was thinking in your list, um, even though I I do kind of like the appeal of reverse, I almost feel like. The entire warband of Bosun and Reverse isn't necessary, and I would potentially just like fill up Suladan's warband with as many things as I could because Suladan himself is a banner, so you're getting the points. Um, he provides the march. He uh, he's a very good fighter, um, and so I think you would almost be able to. Well, you uh, you would end up with with four with thirty eight models, so you would drop only 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 two numbers down. Yeah. Whilst you'd be able to just like really pack a lot of punch into into both Dalamir's and Solon's Warbands to just have like two two big packs that can really like fight on their own and like really be maximized. Yeah, initially I would actually agree with you. And I, I don't I'm not a fan of Reavers to be honest either, mm-hmm. which is kind of why I chose them here. I want to kind of like spice up a little bit. Like I always get a hamburger, now I'm gonna get a cheeseburger, add some cheese to it. Oh, I like so. I like a, I like a, like a, uh, like I really like veggie burgers these days. <laughs> yeah but but the just of, just of it too is if if you take out the reavers in that war ban your uh crossbows are gonna fall way down that's true, actually yeah. actually that's kind of why to like max it out and then i'm also afraid at 600 points of, of and i play i play this list these type of things a lot the one weakness of not having the reavers is you can't really charge terrifying things sure um, but yeah, I, I totally get that. Like, I think Serpent Horde has the potential to add so many cool different things. I always build lists and I'm like, oh, I want to bring African Guard, Serpent Ra- Raiders, like all these different, like yummy, like sprinkled things, even Watchers of Karna that you could like kind of bubble up. 
But yeah, I guess that that's the only reason I would bring the Reavers. It bumps up the crossbows. Then you have kind of like the two powers of the Corsairs. You have the punch from the strength four hit maxed out too, which is quite a lot at 600. And then you have the punch from the backstabbing plus one to wound um, mm-hmm. two attack models for only 10 points. Like yeah, for sure. they automa- auto pass. So it kind of went into like, it's not my strength of play, I guess, but I wanted to lean into, I guess, optimizing. So just, list. just double check. Uh, the Corsairs also have 50% bow limit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I have yeah, no. three right, ri- three writers, sure. three writers, um, and also fifty. Oh, wait, wait a second. Oh no, 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 no. The, the Sorry, Corsairs, no. Corsairs don't have, have thirty-three. 30. Yeah. They yeah. Have so, so hold on. So how? Uh, oh, I see. No, he's got it right. He's yeah, got, yeah, he's yeah, got, yeah, got yeah, yeah, eight, right, eight, right. eighteen models. Yeah. And then twelve models. So thirty. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and then the and then the the what's them called I have fifty, and then I just have three bows. Yeah. And solid ends. Sure. Yeah. So does solid end have the bow? Out of curiosity. Soladin does not. Does I not wanted to kind bow. of. I wanted to put spears on my warriors instead. Um, so, but so that, that, that is mounted, right? He is mounted. Yeah, at one fifteen. So I did. Yeah, I don't know. I just think. Yeah, you need you need kind of that at eight hundred points, like the duality of the hard punch and the hard hitting with shooting. I like it. I'm not like super comfortable saying this is optimized the best. Um, against things, but I think it has a potential because now talking about it, it is, I guess, a ward at 600 yeah. with a lot of yeah. tools. I mean, Dalmir and Soladin aren't any slouches either. Even the Boson has backstabber. In fact, you're, you're actually currently outnumbering my upgraded, updated list from this podcast. Yeah, I actually, I PayPal Matt to make it lower, so... I could outnumber it. I'm not sure I did you. I'm not sure I did you any favors there. Um, I was like Matt. Matt. I was like messaging Matt. Matt. Come on. Come on. I have something, and it's going to be two models less. Please do something about it. And then he made it look like it was your idea. Plot twist. He's the mastermind. Ah, uh, <laughs> the Renaissance man. <laughs> yeah. All right. So should we uh, reveal the battlefield for uh, for this time? Here? Sure. All right. So. So this is basically me versus Rainier, who represents all of the tournament goers on that tournament. I that's not right. Hand. All right. Oh, so this is the board. All right. So let me let me paint the picture with words here. Um, so in the middle of this board is is Weathertop, and this is the Weathertop. This is the Forge World Weathertop with all of its nooks and crannies and steps and rocks and plenty of places to climb around, climb upstairs, hide and cover all sorts of stuff. And that's dead smack in the middle of the board and surrounding that board are a variety of rocks and woods. And um, on the right-hand side of the board are are two patches of woods kind of near the center on the left-hand side of the board are two larger patches of woods, basically uh, one kind of, both of them are, are are kind of in the middle of the quadrant there about halfway uh, toward the back of the board. And then there's a bunch of smaller pieces of rocks and stuff like that, that are just kind of strewn around the board um, uh, in various places. There is one larger rock outcropping um, and, you know, toward the camera on the camera side of the board, which I guess we'll call the South guys. So what we're going to say is, you know, the, Away from the camera is north, uh, toward the camera is south, and then we have um, east and west. So uh, Ammon Hen's in the middle. There's a rock, rock outcropping basically on line with Ammon Hen on the south side of the board. A couple of woods uh, toward the center of the board on the eastern side. A couple of uh, larger woods uh, further back to the north and the south. You know, basically, there's a, a, a wood outcropping in the northwest and a wood or you know, another another thing of woods in the southwest and then filling in the holes in between all those things are some various small rock outcroppings so that's what we have um excellent ground for two infantry armies to fight on which is Definitely. essentially what we've got a, a lot of woods for the elves a lot of woods for the elves that's true as well yeah, a lot of woods for the elves a couple bottlenecks too which might favor you as well because of the fight five. Mm-hmm. Um, but that said, I, I played on this board before in Rhode Island, I believe, at one of your events. I actually played Tim yep. Hines on this board. Yep. Um, the, 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 the other host is podcast. Who, who come in the middle just, you know, show up. Yeah, exactly. I think he was triggered, to be honest. Uh, who won? No, 
the middle uh, weather top Mick is actually very playable in, in, inside there. Oh yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. like I've uh, it, yeah. I've played on one of those. Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. So uh, does does anybody have dice? Actually, yes. I have a die here. Hang on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the die since. Uh, I haven't, I haven't oh, and Del, 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 Delmir is my my uh, general, by the way. Just all right, so we're going to go back. We're going to use the match play guide, and I am um, scrolling back through. All right, so I'm going to go to the pool. So first, we're going to decide which pool you are playing from. All right, so this is pool four, which is kill the enemy scenarios. And then rolling again, we have a five, which is to the death. Yay. All right. Oh, wow, interesting. This will be kind of interesting. All right, so we are playing scenario two to the death. So, so I'm glad I don't have that Braga in my list because that gives me those extra models, and I don't need the march. <laughs> I'm glad that I have a banner. Yes, there is that. Ooh, do you have a banner in your list, man? Well, well, no, because Lake Down don't, don't do it. Hashtag justice for Lake Down. Um, yeah, I, I knew and... actually. I just wanted to like rub it in. <laughs> just Lake Town doesn't have a banner because the master didn't want to pay for it. That's true. Yeah, he's like the only thing that inspires you is my wealth. So get behind me. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I would bring a banner otherwise, but master obviously provides rerolls to all to the entire line. So, hey. all right. So for those who are playing along at home, um, you know, to the death is a common scenario, but I'll go through it very briefly. Uh, basically. Uh, each side gets to deploy up to 12 inches in. So 12 inches from the north, 12 inches from the south. We'll figure out who has which side in a moment. Um, the, uh, and, and basically you go until uh, uh, one side has 25% remaining or you run out of time. Um, and for victory conditions, you get one victory point uh, for wounding the enemy leader, three if you kill him, three victory points for breaking your opponent, five if you remain unbroken. One victory point if you have at least one banner at the remaining of the remainder of the game. And uh, if you have one banner and your opponent has none, you have two victory points. So Rainier is starting out with two victory points in the bank right now because of Sullivan's banner. And then you score two additional victory points if you quarter your opponent within the time available. And the time available for this, let me see if I can uh, look this up. I assume he's using standard length. So this would be an hour and 45 minute game. Um, yes, and also I just literally opened the rules pack of the tournament I was going to go to, and it is one hour forty five minutes for the game for six hundred points. There we go. So we have an uh, we have an hour and forty five minutes to go. Um, so before we actually roll for size, what we need to do is Rainier needs to decide uh, who has the bag of gold to bribe the master. Oh wait, Lord have mercy! What is that rule exactly? I think I know what it is, but I want to make sure. <laughs> so, it, so you pick one of your heroes. Your heroes has a your hero has a bag of gold. If that hero ends up in combat with the master at the start of the fight phase, the master has to make a courage test. If he fails that courage test, he runs away. I'll do solo then. You keep it secret. Oh no 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 no! I'm not I'm not. Oh oh sorry! I'm not gonna do solo damage. Okay, I'm gonna keep a secret. <laughs> no, okay, never mind. Okay, okay. You you cover your face, Mick, and I'll write it down and show it on the. Uh, no, I'll just tell you who it would be. It would actually be. Uh, I mean, uh, whoever, whoever it is, hint, Mick Mick won't know. Dalmir probably because I want to keep solo dance safe for the banner. Whoever it is, the master is staying at the back and getting nowhere near to any of your heroes anyway. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is a rule. That's right. I don't think it really matters. This is a rule that seldom, if ever, gets triggered. The the only time, if you have like a flying hero or something like that, this can be useful. Um, But usually, by the time hilarious to like Golivar's flying with bags of gold, just boom, what's up? Yeah, Yeah. you were gonna run away. You don't have to because I'm just gonna kill you. Snap. Well, that's the other thing. Like Master Master is only like Courage three. So if you if you do bring a a flying monster, they always have Harbinger of Evil. Except eagles, and so mm-hmm. you you plunk them there. It's courage too. Chances are he's gone. Yeah, uh, but uh, I mean, as a practical matter, usually by the time you are getting in and fighting the master, like the the army, the the Town army has fallen apart. In any case, yeah, I'm probably dead by then. So yeah, exactly. Or the ma- and the master has kind of used up all of his resources and has become useless at that or, point. But... Or, I've, or I've already won the game. 
yeah. But it's it's a fun little exercise to go through whenever you play the Masters. You need to have your opponent kind of write down who's got the bribe. All right. So, um, all right. So I'm just gonna rather than doing a roll off here, I'm just gonna roll a die and see who's gonna pick the table side first. So, uh, one, two, or three. It's um, uh, it's going to be Rainier because he's evil, and four, five, or six. It's going to be Mick because he's good. And it's a one. So, Rainier, which side would you like, north or south? I'll just make it easy and pick the side that we're up or we're facing. So I'll just take the south. The south with a nice, rock, nice big rock outcropping on which to pitch, or perch a bunch of crossbowmen. Although that uh, may not be the best place to put them. But in any case, um, uh, okay. So Rainier's in the south, uh, makes in the north. So rare. Where's your first warband going? I'll just hmm. see if I can actually. Do we alternate warbands? Yes. Uh, yes, you alternate war bands. Okay, I'll put Solodans down, kind of like just in the middle, a little leaned towards the western part, uh, the left side of us, our screen. Yeah, All a little right. further back. Yeah, about that, a, little, a couple inches further than that, or closer to us. Closer to, so like here. Yeah, about there. You just right. give Solodan the ability to go either, either way, wherever the arm. Well, yeah, we'll say there. All right. So there's. And they're gonna There's, they're gonna more hug hug the rocks so I can have more space. I can to draw put the an S here. Guys there. Yeah. All right. So there's be solely Soladan's warband. All right. Um, remind me. So this is twelve inch deployment, right? Uh, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yeah. it is. Uh, so I'm gonna take Haldir and his warband and put them basically facing from the opposite on my side. So like right in this area here? Um, somewhere around there, yeah. Actually, you'd probably be a little further back. So like Ish. Right in there. All right, let's see here. And I'm gonna put... You said there's victory points for the leader? There is. Yes. One and three. Okay. okay. So I'll put, I'll put Dalmir's warband now just right behind Solidans, a little further, closer to the board. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, here? Right, right there. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll drop Galadriel pretty much just behind Haldir, pretty much in the middle of, of all the elves. Okay, all right. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, um, I'm just gonna say, Haldir plus Galadriel. Okay. And then I'll put uh, the Reaver Warband just right behind that middle rock. So, um, like right back here? Yeah, right. Yeah, right there. Well, I'm going to continue to create my ball of death. So, spears will go somewhere around uh, the elves and trying to maybe put some bows slightly forward wherever I can, just so. They may be able to shoot at some point in the future. Um, All right. So but, this but, is... like, but like essentially kind of where those little two models are. Uh, that might be a like, little that may be a little far forward. Little far. In, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like but like I mean zone. I mean I mean there, but a bit north from there. All right. So 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 yeah. so, so essentially they're like they're like the, the second rank. All right. So this is this is the um the master's warband. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually here. I'll just basically, do... basically, basically, all of my warbands are just going in a ball there. So like you can you can just write all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's what I'm going to. I'm just going to plus Lake Town, and I'll I'll just kind of make this circle a little bigger. Yeah. All right. All right. So there's the ball of death. The ball of death is going to be on the to the left of uh, Weathertop. And uh, Rainier's scattered out there. All right, so let's see. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll to see who gets priority on the first turn. Again, I'm just gonna do good evil since it's a 50-50 shot, and then we'll we'll have you kind of discuss what your battle plan is. Um. Uh. In. Uh. In that order, I guess. So let's see here and. 
All right, so this is a six. So what's what's good going to do here, Mick? So good is going to move in such a way that it will stay. Uh, all my models will stay out of twenty-four inch range from the crossbow, from the crossbows, mm -hmm. and I will intend to basically make a little space for my uh, archers to start moving forward into a position where. They're just out of the 24 from crossbows, but in case Rainier starts moving forward, uh, his models are in range, so I should be able to shoot something. Essentially, essentially, the, 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 the entire battle plan for the first couple of turns is going to be to see whether Rainier decides to, to move forward at full speed or not, and then hopefully get, get some shots off. Okay. And you said um, a couple turns. Is that like two, three? Just basically what happens. Uh, well, yeah. So it, it 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 will really depend on like on on what it you depend do. Depend on what you like, do. So, it, so yeah, yeah, like saying... essentially, essentially the, the 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 initiative is is kind of yours in that if you if you do decide to 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 stay back, then I'm just gonna be moving slightly forward and trying to get into those spots where I can I can move and shoot, but but like I'm out uh, uh, I'm outside of your crossbow range. But if you decide to start moving forward, then I might also get some shots off, but then also start moving forward. All right. I don't, so, I don't, I don't really want a shooting battle here because I'm better in combat. So Mick is, Mick is going to take the wait and see approach here. So yeah. Rainier, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm actually... So like, we're assuming this is at a very competitive tournament or Articon, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is I'm going to play this if it's like high stakes, I'm not gonna be like, oh, like okay. So I would just, I just, I just, I, just, I play the clock to be honest. In so, short, so, so um, you got hide. Yeah, so yeah, I'm not gonna hide sense. so much. <laughs> yeah, so basically, what I would do is, you see my battle line of the corsairs, basically with the with the their defense are blisters too. Yeah. So what I would do is, my potential thought initially is, I would want you to shoot at me because like most people that i would come across with blinding light they're like okay I can take it take a piecemeal the d6 actually is really hard to kill and when any strength four crossbow gets through it's a four a four to kill one of your like down yeah. yeah five so i would kind of have that in mind and kind of hope you would uh stay back i don't have my guys all the way on the 12 inch line which means to begin we're further than 24 inches away from each other you don't have a uh, march which i kind of appreciate in that sense so my initial thought would be two two rounds of shooting until you would think okay this isn't working he's just playing the clock and you charge me so two turns of shooting 20 24 inches away six divided by four is 24 inches so that's five turns to actually come and meet me so that's actually seven turns before the battle lines even hit and i would say at I'd lose maybe around three or four max. I would assume um, with a defense of six on on the crossbar. Before we not... before we get um, too far into this, well, we've we've already, keep... already played the the entire game here. Matt, yeah, uh, Matt, Matt, you're like you're like way behind at the moment. Yeah, well, <laughs> hang on a second. But on the first turn, are you going to advance your arbalesters into range, or are you basically hanging back outside of twenty four inches? No, no, because I think in this position the. It's on Mick to decide what to do, to be honest. Right. So I'm so going to hang them behind. I'm going to position, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to hang them behind. Basically, just keep them there. I'm not going to make it look like I'm castling. I might move a couple of Soledan's Warband or even the Reavers around like it's going to look like I'm going to charge, but knowing like you can't actually come in range with it for a while. Around, around where? Um, Soledan's Warband. So... Not within 24 inches, but I would take them, maybe move them a couple inches, straighten up the battle lines to where it looks like I'm getting in position to do something. I so wouldn't like go to this yeah, way. exactly like that. Yeah, because I would have the potential if I wanted to go east. My strategy is also kiting, to be honest, cool. because it kind of sucks um, that I have two victory points like off the bat in a way if I keep Soledan alive. So I'm going to know that, and even if he comes... I would just kind of kite. Yeah. So, right. yeah. So, so probably after like turn one, I can see that you're not you're not really going anywhere. So from t turn two onwards, there isn't really any point of me just sitting back and shooting because clearly, like, I'm not gonna do anything with it, and I'm not I'm not gonna break you in an hour and forty five minutes uh, with with just eight shots. Even if I had like twelve shots, I I wouldn't. 
Um, so my only option really is to move forward as, as fast as possible, try to catch you, and then try to kill you in combat. And in oh, combat, if only he had Braga. Well, <laughs> Matt's well, like rubbing it in. He's well, like Braga, salt. Braga, Braga would only give me one extra one one turn by uh, by using by using two two points of might, and then true. And Conceivably, then, he could use no points of might to do it. By the way, that's the beauty of Braga. True, point. true, true, true. Um, but anyway, all right, I I, I, I take your point. Um, uh, all right, so you're head you're heading forward. So and, basically, basically yeah, yeah, I'm head, I'm heading forward. When you're sticking back. And uh, we're, I'm hoping that um, I always play super fast. So uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to get like possibly a few turns of combat if, if everything goes well, unless Rainier starts stalling, um, which I hope you won't. And then in combat itself, um, I figured I'm winning about 65% of fights and in most of them I'm killing. So... Um, I should be on the winning end through normal infantry fights. All mm-hmm. right. So Rainier, what's your reaction? So as, I get that. I'm, I, I know like we talk about hurtling towards you. Slow, slow plane or whatever. I would not artificial slow play, do yeah. any like stupid things yeah, like course, scratch yeah. my head or, but I would in game slow play as in like, I would negate the combat as much as possible. And I'm looking at this too. Even if you go one, one round of shooting, it'll take five turns to reach me. Mm-hmm. And that's without me moving. That's around four turns of where I get 10, 10 11, 12, 13, because I have bows to 13 shots off, 10 of those being D, D4. That's still around that if I don't move. And I'm pretty sure, or actually, like, well, we're, we're hypothetically, I would move, to be honest. I would rotate as you're coming around the weather top, I would rotate the opposite way, potentially keep my crossbows in position because I would get those shots off off and get a couple kills mm-hmm. i prioritize the the mounts of course and the soft d4 so hopefully it gets through the battle line kills a few things but i would yeah i would, I would rotate and solely would rotate with it especially because solely soledan is two, where all my points two, is these are two victory points yeah yeah like that this is yeah, this yeah. is i'm sorry it's kind of boring but like i would just play for yeah, the no. tiny little victory of that well, and i would i would shift but like soledan's in there um Potentially, I would keep. Yeah, Soledan would go with the majority of the, so a lot of the force. Potentially, I would keep some Reavers, and around the same position with the Bosun, only for the purpose of if I wanted to heroic march with them, to get get out of dodge, I could bring the crossbows with me. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So for, first of all, I don't think you uh, you should say you're sorry because that is clearly the correct play. And so, yeah, yeah. You, you winning, you shouldn't really be you, you shouldn't really be sorry about winning, and and, <laughs> and, and, and playing correctly. Um, I think generally I'm on the losing side here because because you start the game with the two victory points, mm-hmm. uh, which is one of the really really big downsides of, of the scenario. Um, there is only an hour forty five, so uh, the whole the whole point of me, for example, doing the sh- the, the round of shooting at the start was to see how you're going to react. And so if you're if if you're one of the less experienced players, you might actually start moving forward towards me, at which point that that will actually give me a, a, a big advantage late, later on. But seeing that you're playing that way, I'm basically probably from early on thinking, okay, how can I like grab any victory points and try to play the game as fast as possible? Um, and then hopefully eventually try to engage and win in combat. But I, I'm sort of accepting from the start that I'm sort of in a losing position because of the banner. Yeah, yeah and, I, and it, it's kind of like you said it perfectly too. Like we know each other's strengths, we know each other's like weakness, and it's kind of like I'm flipping the switch to play hmm? my strengths, which is movement, and not get anywhere around your strengths. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which, which is fighting you, to be honest. Yeah, no, because like. Essentially, I just want to like test the waters at the start and see what sort of a player you are, mm. and then see if, you, see if they'll make a mistake. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but that, that that's good that you bring it up too. And like for players that are watching, like be calm and steady in your games. If you go up against shooting, like don't freak out. Yeah. Like okay, you may move like move, lose one or two guys. They rule. Just don't freak out. Like stick to the plan. Be smart about something. It reminds me of like many of these historical battles where you see the battle lines and they get one volley volley off and then they like kind of freak and they route or they charge because they get a little angsty mm-hmm. and then you charge piecemealed 
and then it just works into it. Just yeah. stay, stay, stay the course. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, I, I, I think we, we've got a universal consensus here about the way this plays out. And that's that it, you're moving six inches a turn. You only have a couple of cavalry that really aren't going to, yeah, no, do anything I'm, I'm definitely not, not sending the cavalry. Not, not sending the cavalry yeah. into a death and, yeah. and, and the, the yeah. heroes are aren't mounted too, which is yeah. kind of hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, Dal- Dalamir is the leader, and he's got stock unseen, so he's going to be hiding behind a rock somewhere. You're you're not going to get the points for him. I suppose it's conceivable that if all the all all ten of the arbalesters concentrate on Haldir, that they'll be able to get a wound on <clears throat> on him, despite the the blinding light, but but who knows? Uh, and I don't think in an hour and 45 minutes with Rainier um, playing the dodge to the side game that anybody's going to break here. Um, yeah. So I think this ends up in the end after an hour and 45 minutes have passed, this is going to end up being a two zero to Rainier. Basically he brought a banner. <laughs> yeah. Basically I lost the, the, game, <laughs> yeah. the game, I guess the entire tournament. Um, no, but um, this actually this actually highlights one thing which I always thought was true in that um, when when you know how the game works and you know what sort of the general strategy your army can do and your opponent's army can do, you can very easily predict and visualize the entire match before the game even begins. And so this is this is pretty much exactly how how we've yeah. done it here. Yeah, and, in some yeah, circumstances we both, we both more than others, like two, but yeah, but I think we in both the, had in like this one. A, a few sentences, a few yeah. sentences in and stuff when we're like we yeah. know exactly yeah. yeah in like how many models will be lost to like we'll probably lose yeah. like maybe six or seven models each yeah. like it's going to be kind of tedious like yeah yeah and so this is one of those situations where like uh as a as a player you just have to like take a moment at the start and just have a thing figure things out and be like okay well this is actually quite quite winnable from one side and i don't have to necessarily do anything on that side whilst the other side is like okay how do i overcome this tiny a disadvantage which actually currently puts me in a very losing position yep um i i would say mick maybe this highlights something else to to do about your list is maybe that other gladrum knight needs to go away along with one light town guy and grab yourself a banner <laughs> and give it to an elf <laughs> oh no um so uh, yeah, it, it, it would be something considered too, because let's say Articon's what six games. I, I'm pretty sure at least one, one, one or two banner missions will pop up and always yeah. those banner missions are mobile. You know what I mean? And then like they're They're going to have a rogue March to get, get, get away and stuff. So it, it is something to consider. But then, yeah. but then, but the question is, do I, do I take a banner or do I take Braga? Cause if I take both, then I'm no longer a horde. And I can't, uh, I can't have every is, single I, boy in, in the in, in the list. For you're still boys. thirty. Se- even if you took a banner and Braga, you're still thirty-seven models. Yeah, fair. I, um, and I mean, you I could also six, probably. Like, I mean, and, and if you wanted to, you could probably trade in one of those guard of the glad from court for two Lake Town guys and get back up to thirty-eight models. So I actually wonder if, let's say, on, on the hypothetical situation where I did have a banner in this list, how would you play Rainier? Because because then it's a it's a it's a two two different game. Start. It's a it's a completely different game then. Yeah. How I would play is I'd probably play it similar in the sense where I have my arbalisters, but I would kind of spread. You see, kind of where your guys are coming in. Mm-hmm. I'd want to open kind of engulf you in that kind of sense to where you don't just have a battle line of fight five beating me in every fight um i try to pick some off, things off also too i'd probably at a high stakes tournament articon and a team i'd play really softly also because i'd know for sure okay a draw you can get a draw easily go for a minor victory but i wouldn't chance anything that would break me mm-hmm. yeah because th- this is actually another thing that i always think about in in, in playing tournaments in that Let's say, let's say you're in a situation where you know that you have to win the next two games that, uh, uh, in order to win the tournament. Mm-hmm. Whilst if you draw, well, you're gonna be let's say 15th, and then to me it's like if you if you're 15th or 150th, it doesn't really make that much of a difference because yeah, because that, you haven't told you you haven't won. So then the question is, that's true. and winning is everything. <laughs> well, it but is. I, I, I would, if that, that's, that's the case. 
I think I would put the Arbalisters on that perched rock because then they could control any area of the battlefield. And I'm not too worried about your shooting. I do think we would kind of match each other in shooting, to be honest, with kills. Uh, the, the problem with so, putting so the Arbalisters the, the problem with putting the Arbalisters on the rock, though, is that once you get them up there, you're going to control the area that that rock can see, but no other area because it's going to take you forever to get them down. Yeah, but he's not going anywhere anyway. He's yeah, like, that, he, that's a point. Yeah, he's either yeah, gonna, but either going to sit back or he's going to sit back. Like this, this is this is like, it, it, it is it is a reaction. Yeah, it's, it's a reaction. I'm going to react to you. And I yeah. see a lot of people actually pull up uh, Corsair armies and think, oh, like this is a winning, winning list. I'm do so good, and they split their force. They see yeah. like, oh, the Arbalisters are defensive perch them up on a hill and throw my reavers and everything else at them. And you're basically splitting your army in two thirds to attack one third to do nothing. So I, I don't, I don't, I probably wouldn't want to go for that. Um, that's why I'd play defensively I'm because a, you have okay, to, this whole enough. army, I mean, you're, you're, you're a death bubble, but my army too, in a sense, Corsairs and Serpent Horde, they actually do work really good together. And the synergy of Soledan and everything, throwing weapons and everything. Like, I think it all has to be, close I, I i would say i think if you because of the way this particular rock outcropping is shaped um it's it's very it, it's kind of elongated from north to south and then there's some on the western side there's some rock outcroppings that you can't really stand on that would block fire i think you would actually have basically a blind spot to the west that um nick could sweep around into and kind of approach your army without getting shot by the arbalesters and that's something to think about if you put him up on the rock and it's, and once you put him up yeah. on the rock, if he does that, um, you know, you're going to be able to get some shots on him, but there are going to be a bunch of arbalesters that probably aren't going to be shooting or going to be spending a good deal of time climbing down the rock and getting into a position to shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I do like the idea of arbalesters though, where you can actually throw them in combat, probably not against your list. They wouldn't do too well, but I like that they still get backstabber and they have shield shielding so like you do get a fight for model that i would consider it a 600 point list to be pretty viable who can shield and you have a horde to where it's like if you just need bodies at the worst he's basically a corsair um warrior without throwing daggers yeah all right guys cool well you all set mick now you now you've got yeah. your list fine tuned for the tournament yeah. you're not gonna play in. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like eventually, uh, since it's still like what two months until Articon, eventually this podcast is gonna fine-tune my list to the point where we're all gonna agree on what list I should take. Yeah, it's gonna be in, <laughs> yeah. and, yeah, and then it's everyone's gonna, like, gonna fine-tune their list to like counter your list and it's gonna Yeah. Well well the, the two people that listen to this show will have done that. <laughs> <laughs> um I think Well, that's Rainier gone. Um, yep. So Rainier from South Korea is signing off. <laughs> they, they don't really have very, very slowly. They don't really have very good internet over there. I heard they they're, they're not into online gaming or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not really a thing. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. All right. Well, he's just gonna lovingly serenade us, but uh, I think we can sign off now. Um, all right. Until uh, next week or next time. All right. Good seeing y'all. Take care. <laughs>